Over the next two hours, we're going to be hearing from leaders from Switzerland to Qatar and UAE, from the United Kingdom to Barbados, who will be taking to our virtual floor to commit their nation's support. But to kick us off to the person leading this charge, President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. President von der Leyen, in your view, what's the world's roadmap for ending this pandemic? It is so great to be here with you. And uh, indeed, we will only end this pandemic when it has been ended everywhere. And that means every person in the world having access to tests, treatments and vaccines, no matter where they live and uh, where they are from or what they look like. We need to invest in producing vaccines at unprecedented speed and scale. And a task of this size can only happen if the world unites. We need our best scientists to work together. We need our global health organizations to join forces. And we need governments, business and uh, philanthropists to step in and provide funding. Tens of billions are required. And this is why on the 4th of May, I launched a pledging marathon to bring world leaders together. We raised almost 10 billion euros. And I'm so grateful to all those who pledged money. But we need more. And this is why the European Commission teamed up with Global Citizen and uh, with artists. You know, I trust their power to bring people together, to mobilize their energy and to trigger change. We need to rebuild communities devastated by coronavirus in a fair and in a just way. And this is why I'm happy to announce that Team Europe today pledges another 4.9 billion euros to help vulnerable countries finance their recovery from the pandemic. This is thanks to the close partnership between the European Commission and the European Investment Bank. That is phenomenal news, uh, welcomed by so many uh, around the world. Uh, but as we talk about the issue of vaccines, which you know, you know ultimately will be the, 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 I guess, if you want to say, the magic bullet to ending all of this, that's the hope, certainly, that one will be achieved quickly. We talk about vaccines, but we also keep hearing about vaccine nationalism. How do we counter that? Well, I am a firm believer in vaccine multilateralism. To think that you can beat this virus by vaccinating only your own people while, other neglecting, while neglecting the others is just plain wrong. I mean, we live in a very connected world. No country will be able to go back to normal while others are still fighting the virus. So first we need a vaccine. Then we need to make this vaccine affordable. And for that, I'm trying to give, convince high income countries to reserve vaccines, not only for themselves, but also for low and middle income countries. And this is what our campaign, Global Goal, Unite for Our Future is all about. This is a stress test for solidarity. And this event here gives me hope. I like that it's a stress test for solidarity. So when you look at today's event, what does, what does success look like for you? Well, since this crisis started, we have already achieved a lot. We have built a network of states, global health institutions, philanthropists and businesses to provide a common answer to coronavirus. We started to collect money from, for a global response we have built a system to coordinate the efforts of all players involved, scientists, global health organizations, industry, logistics experts, public authorities. And we did all this from scratch. None of this did exist. None of this was ever done before. But the task will only be completed when vaccines, tests and treatments are available and affordable to every child women and men who needs them. And today's event brings us one big step closer to that aim. President Odelaine, thank you so much. Thank you.